Sony's cameras have a reputation of being great low-light performers, and really, the a7 IV is no exception to this. But one of the reasons this is true is because cameras like the a7 IV include a dual ISO circuit that allows the camera to produce a clean image both at a low ISO value and a high ISO value, and while cameras like the a7S III and FX3 include a very similar system, the one in the a7 IV is a bit different in terms of the numbers here you'll want to consider with ISO. So in this video, we're going to talk about what these ISO values are in the a7 IV and how you can find them depending on which picture profile you are shooting in. So the first thing you're going to want to know here is the fact that these ISO values, both the low and high value, are going to differ depending on which picture profile you're using. Yes, whether you're someone that likes to shoot in log footage, say in S-Log3 and grade this later in post, or someone that prefers a more in-camera color look such as with s -Cinetone, the low and high ISO values for these particular two picture profiles are going to vary, and this will hold true with many of the other picture profiles that you'll find in the camera. Now that said, the way you can find the low and high ISO value with any of these picture profiles should be consistent across the camera, and so let's talk about that. So in order to find the low ISO value, this is either going to be one of two things. So for some picture profiles like s -Cinetone, this will be the lowest ISO value that you can shoot in in the camera, which will be 125 in the case of the a7 IV. Now for other picture profiles like S-Log3, this will be the first ISO value that you find that does not have any top or bottom lines under it, which in the case of the a7 IV is 800. These other ISO values that have the lines above and below them are extended low ISO values, and while they might give you some extra range out of some of these picture profiles, they are not technically the base ISO. So once you've found the base ISO, from there it is actually a relatively straightforward process to finding that second dual ISO value. And we ultimately have a couple of ways we can attempt to go about this in the a7 IV. Overall, the a7 IV has a two stops of light difference between the low ISO and high ISO value. And because each time you double your ISO, that is effectively one stop of light added, you can take that low or base ISO and multiply it by 4, and that will generally give you the second high ISO value that you'll want to target. So if we were to take s -Cinetone, for example, which has a low ISO of 125, 125 times 4 gives us a number of 500, and 500 is in fact the high ISO value that you'd want to target and use in the a7 IV. Now let's take something like S-Log3, where we noted the base ISO is 800 in the a7 IV. 800 times 4 is 3200, and thus 3200 is the second high ISO value that we would target in the camera for that. Now, if you're not a fan of necessarily doing multiplication to try to solve this, you can think of this another way. Sony cameras, by default, tend to increment ISO in thirds when you click through your ISO wheel, meaning three clicks of your ISO wheel is also a stop of light. So, if you roughly click your ISO wheel six times up from that base ISO in either of these picture profiles, you're going to land at its high ISO value, and essentially the same rule applies here. Now, once you essentially understand these rules, it is effectively the same in applying it to almost any other picture profile in the camera and you can therefore find the low and high ISO values. And maybe one final note to consider. I would take these given ISO values as sort of a guide to follow, but not necessarily a strict rule. Really, the a7 IV is a camera that will do very well in the low and mid ISO range, probably up until around the 12,800 level or so, almost regardless of picture profile. And this is what a lot of my early testing and different shooting situations I've already been with the camera in have shown me. With cameras like the a7S III and FX3 with a much wider range between the low and high ISO, ISO values, there's more of a chance there in getting some noise in your image if you're shooting under the high ISO than, say, compared to if you were to do the same thing with the a7 IV. But lighting conditions can completely vary from shot to shot, and if you're ever in a situation where you're concerned and want to ensure you're getting the cleanest image possible you can, these ISO values are what you'll want to stick to. So that is a little run-through of the dual ISO system in the a7 IV and how to work with and find those values. Now hopefully this video has been of some help to you. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if it has. I have a number of a7 IV videos on this channel already, and there will be more to come. And if you're curious how the low-light performance and dual ISO system in the a7S III and FX3 works, I have a separate video on this channel that I will link to right beside me that will show you that. For now, that is all I have to say, so thanks for watching.